Greetings. My name is Brigitte Mars, and I'm your tour guide today for Psychedelic Ceremony. I've been sitting with people during the psychedelic experience for many years, and now that there's more decriminalization, more research going on with psychedelics, I find that a lot of people are wondering, what can they do with this profound medicine? I know that over the years, for many people, it's just been going to a concert or going to a party. But I also want to give you some ideas on how you can have a really deep experience that can be an opportunity for self-exploration and healing. So we're just going to go over a few ideas of things that you might do with a few close friends because creating safe set and setting is so important. One thing you might consider is having a guide. A guide is someone who is keeping the space safe. Maybe they're going to help you not get locked out of the house or not take your clothes off at the park because a guide can really help uh, keep the energy moving. Maybe tell you, let's call your mother tomorrow, not today. So a guide should be someone who's comfortable with the psychedelic experience. They may be on a small amount of medicine or they may not be. So I'm gathered today with a few of my friends and I want to just say that when we enter the psychedelic experience, it could be a really wonderful idea to help get our bodies ready, to be clean, to wear something comfortable. You may find that synthetic fabrics and synthetic fragrances just don't feel right. You might want to eat very healthfully. If you've eaten food that feels toxic and polluting, that's really going to be part of your ceremony and you may not enjoy that. You might also think about setting up an altar so you have everything in place. You don't want to be going in the garage or the attic looking for your sketch pad that you had in college. So creating safe set and setting and having everything ready is a great idea. So welcome. We're going to be joining a few friends just to see what we might do on a summer afternoon um, or a winter afternoon. Thanks for joining us. You may want to create an altar for your psychedelic ceremony. Pictures of saints, gurus, spiritual teachers. Um, you might want to find this as a time to work with crystals. Maybe you want to experiment with things like color therapy. This is a little color therapy wand. It changes colors. You can use it on different parts of your body. You might also want to have some beautiful visuals. I have some art books here. Uh, Bob Venosa, Alex Gray, some of my favorites. I also love the idea of using an oracle. Oracles can give you some really deep insight and help you with your intention. I love um, this. Um, essential oils might be something that you smell. So you have something for all your chakras, for all your senses. And of course, it can be a really wonderful thing just to be in nature, but in the winter time, we might find that finding things to do in our home, in a safe place, is a great place to spend the afternoon. I have tools like uh, rolling your, your skin, you can use moisturizers, um, you can um, eat really healthy snacks towards the end. You want to have that all prepared. So activating all your senses. It's said that whatever we do during the psychedelic experience has the opportunity to imprint really deeply. And so what we put our attention to can really be profound, deep, and have a long-lasting influence. That's why we want to be really careful what kind of music and what kind of art we're looking at. So we're going to be joining a few of my friends just to see how we might conduct a sacred psychedelic ceremony. Um. 
Setting intention gives us something to come back to when we're traveling the universe, just to remember that intention. It's a powerful time. One thing I like to share during the psychedelic experience is a reading of the psychedelic prayers that are a translation of the Tao Te Ching that Dr. Timothy Leary and Ralph Metzner updated in the 70s when they went to India. And I'm going to read one of those prayers for us. The message of posture. During the experience, observe your body, mandala of the universe. Observe your body of ancient design, holy temple of consciousness. Observe its structured wonders, skin, hair, tissue, vein, muscle, net of nerve. Observe its message. Does it merge or does it strain? Does it rest serene on sacred ground or tilt propped up on wire and sticks? On tiptoe, one cannot stand for long. Tension retards the flow. Observe the mandala of your body. So during the psychedelic experience, we want to be very present. Being overly chatty, talking about things that happened in the past are not really going to serve us in the here and now. But creating a set and setting that has activities that we can do quietly together are a great idea. We have some people coloring here. Carla and Lee are coloring sacred geometry. It's something you can work on and then your drawing can be a reminder of your adventure. Another possibility is doing yoga. Things that feel good and are good for our bodies anyways are certainly good to do during the psychedelic experience. We have Bethy Lovelight doing some yoga and Christina is laying on the biomat, which is a amethyst crystal mat because at least during some of the ceremony we want to go really deep and just not be looking at anything visual but go inside our inner mind and when taking really high doses just laying there might be all that we're able to do other things that we might do during the psychedelic ceremony might be go to a museum good idea to have a guide or a botanical garden I remember going to the botanical garden and a guy telling me, don't eat the flowers. So um, we just have everything set up, set and setting, it's safe, activities, and we get to enjoy a wonderful afternoon together. Massage therapy can be an opportunity for healing body, mind, and spirit during this open, receptive time in our lives. We increase circulation, we can stimulate endorphin production. So what an opportunity. I know personally I've had experience of seeing myself made in time-lapse photography of my mother and my children being made for me. Profound things can happen. And if you have an intention about some healing that you need, this is a great opportunity to work with someone trusted who can help facilitate this powerful presence of massage therapy. It is good to know what to do in case someone has a difficult experience. I like to think of it as spiritual emergence rather than a spiritual emergency. But if you're ever in a situation where someone has taken too much or they get really fearful, holding an amethyst crystal can be very grounding. Ancient royal family members would drink wine in amethyst goblets so that they wouldn't divulge state secrets. Also, taking some CBD can be grounding and maybe changing the music. If you're inside, go outside. If you're outside, go inside. And also tell the person who's having a hard time that it's only gonna last a few hours. This is not how it will be for the rest of eternity. Integration is really important. So at the end of a ceremony, coming together again in a circle and talking about if your intention was unfolded for you, I think having a journal is a great tool and maybe having the next day to rest, to nourish yourself. Some people like to use the supplement 5-HTP to help rebuild their serotonin levels. Um, I know that I feel really fulfilled in my intention about sharing this sacred space with all of you and uh, bringing this message to the world that we are um, activators and this is powerful medicine and our intention is to really make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
We thank all of you listeners for joining us in the Psychedelic Ceremony, and we hope that you'll carry some of these ideas into your life and into the world. Many blessings. Thank you.